Probably the most important thing really to get, and it's like putting a new garden in, mm. you've got to make sure the soil is suitable to grow the plants or to grow the lawn. Um, uh, often with new builds, they have a lot of clay soils which are, are left mm. behind mm. and they sort of get pushed out into the garden and then um, yeah. spread out. Um, and of course, the grass or the plants don't tend to grow very well in those types of soils. Mm. Yeah. So it's worth spending a bit of time uh, if it is like that, and you've got a lot of clay soil, for instance, um, it's worth uh, introducing some new topsoil. We have here what we call a, a lawn mix, which um, is a special soil for growing grass, either seed or instant turf. It depends on whether you want to put turf in or, or seed, um, but it's suitable for both. Um, and you need a reasonable layer of, of good soil, probably say four inches of, of good topsoil. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not so critical about what's underneath, but for, for the grass to grow well, it needs a decent soil to grow in. As long as the soil drains well, you know, some soils, um, like on these sort of days, the water collects, you know, and doesn't drain away, and you end up with wet spots in the, in the grass or in the garden beds where the roots of the plants are affected. Yes. It's the same with the lawn. Mm. So you need to make sure it's reasonably well drained. Um, sometimes you have to introduce um, artificial drainage pipes in extreme cases to mm. take excess water away from the, from the lawn mm. itself. Um, but most areas, if the soil drains reasonably well, then a, a topsoil above it would be, would be enough. The topsoil needs to be level. Um, and obviously if you've got hollows and dips in the okay. soil then the grass is going to follow those mm. hollows and dips so mm. if you want um, you know a nice flat area to walk on mm. um, it doesn't matter if it's on a slope mm. but if you want it um, you know um, to look good and to walk easily on then it needs to be level so it comes down to the choice of whether you want to use um, seed mm. uh, obviously it's a a less expensive option mm -hmm. or if you want to use instant turf. The turf is, um, as the name suggests, you know, a, 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 like a carpet, you've got lawn there straight away mm -hmm. and within, you know, a couple of weeks you can start using it whereas with lawn seed you have to wait for it to mm -hmm. establish mm -hmm. and thicken out and that can take quite a long time, you know, to get a lawn established from seed in Melbourne, depending on when it's put in, it can take up to 12 months. Because oh. um, you end up invariably with patches that you have to over sow, or you'll have areas where the weeds spring up, and um, you have to maybe put some new seed into those areas and try to control the weeds. So there's advantages with both. Um, it just depends on how patient you, you are, you know, whether you want to have instant turf or, or seed. The buffalo by far mm. is probably the most popular grass yeah. Australia-wide mm. because it's very durable. It grows in all sorts of climates. Mm -hmm. And you've probably heard of Sue Walter so, buffalo. Yeah. Uh, by far, that's the most mm. popular grass. It sort of ticks all the boxes and mm. grows happily in a little bit of shade, mm. um, but it tolerates a range of climates. Um, and it's tough, you know, it's a hardy grass, it's good in the summertime. Mm. Um, any of those buffalo types of grasses in the winter are affected by the cold, so they tend to go dormant in mm. winter and often can look a bit yellow or even a bit brown in the winter time, particularly if we get a lot of frosty weather. Mm. Um, but the beauty of them is as soon as the weather heats up, they sort of bounce back and green up again and grow very well through those, those hotter months of the year. So um, probably the most durable out of all the, all the grasses is the, 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 um, the buffalo. Um, there's others like, um, you might have heard of Kaikuyu. <laughs> Kaikuyu is um, a uh, South African grass originally. Mm. Um, it's a very um, tough grass, very hardy grass, often used in very exposed um, conditions like coastal gardens. Mm -hmm. um, this one's called Emerald Kai Q. It's been developed in Australia not to be affected as much in winter from the colder weather. Mm -hmm. So it's more durable through the colder weather. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tend to go as yellow as what the old Kai Q varieties were. Mm -hmm. The downside of Kai Q can be very rampant so if you've got a garden bed um, adjacent to your lawn, 
if you're not mowing and edging the lawn regularly, it can escape into the garden beds and become a bit of a nuisance. It's that long sort of runner type grass, very spongy when you walk on it. But the beauty of it is it's a very tough grass, you know, very heat tolerant, drought tolerant. And, uh, mm. and uh, again, won't grow in the shade, doesn't like shade. So watering, how, how, how you know, between um, um, buffalo and uh, cactus, yeah. water requirement is? I don't one? water mine at home. Doesn't get any water apart from the rain. Same. Now it does. It, it'll suffer a bit if we get some really hot, dry weather for a long period of time. Mm. Um, it survives, mm. but um, uh, it, it never gets watered. Um, it's that sort of grass. The buffalo would be better with a bit of water. Mm. Um, it would tolerate uh, fairly mm. dry conditions, right. but. Um, it, you know, if you, if you water it well and feed it well, then it tends to look better and keeps it nice and green. You know? So, I'd, I'd, with any lawn you put in, I'd probably encourage you to water it and feed it anyway. You know, just keep it looking good. There are various types of lawn foods, um, and it depends on whether you want to um, go with a, a chemical fertilizer or a, an organic fertilizer. Uh, Scots make a range of different types of lawn foods. Um, generally slow release fertilisers, so they're applied probably once every three months, right through the warmer months of the year. So you, you might, um, say you, your new turf has been down for say three months, mm. and then you'll give it a, an initial feed, mm. and then you'd follow that up every three months, right through the warmer weather. Um, the company that does uh, the Sir Walter, um, they have their own, I'm looking to see it. They have their own branded fertiliser. Um, and with any of these grass foods, you can use them on any types of lawn. Mm -hmm. This is Sir Walter's own brand. Uh, they recommend uh, three monthly. Um, but even in the winter time, when the weather's cold, um, to help to keep the lawn green, they also recommend feeding. There's very low risk of burning your lawn when you use slow-release fertilisers. So in the past, they used to use very strong fertilisers that um, if you use them too heavy handed you run the risk of burning the grass and burn the, um, the foliage of the grass. Um, the beauty of the slow release fertilisers is they're washed into the soil very quickly and don't tend to sit on the foliage where they're going to burn them. So because they're slow release they are less likely to burn the water. So, um, But if you didn't want to use chemical fertilisers then you can get organic type corn foods. Um, Dynamic Lifter actually make a, a granulated lawn food, so this is organic. Um, uh, you can't burn when you use these sort of fertilisers. The downside is they're slow, um, slow to act. So if you wanted to green up your lawn really quickly, then you'd probably use um, one of these. Um, if you're happy to wait, then you could use something like that. Now this is very similar to the palletised Dynamic Lifter. Um, this is much uh, finer granules, so uh, if you use normal dynamic lifter on your lawn and then you mow your lawn, you can pick up the granules with your lawnmower, um, whereas these sort of work their way down into the, into the root system. And do we have to use any weed killers? Or? Yeah, so if you get, you get uh, different sorts of weed killers, um, and you can apply them different ways, so for buffalo lawns, for instance, you can get a... This is a hose on um, weed and feed together. I make a lot of these products so they're convenient to use. Um, and being a liquid, they're sort of taken up by the plant, lawn plants very quickly and, um, and often green up the lawn very quickly as well. Um, they're designed for, you can use this on any types of grass. Um, they do make specific ones for just buffalo lawns, but um, the weeder in these products are designed to kill just flat weeds, like dandelions or um, clover, which are common weeds in lawn. Um, they won't kill grassy weeds, because if they did, they're also going to kill your lawn. So they're only intended to control what they call broadleaf weeds or flat weeds. And you can buy them like this as a hose on, you can buy them as a granule. Um, uh, if you've got buffalo lawn, you have to make sure you're using the one buffalo. that uh, is suitable for buffalo lawns. Mm -hmm.
even though it's not a fertiliser, a lot of people use sea salt in the garden thinking they're feeding their plants. It's not actually a food, it's a tonic. But if your lawn was looking a bit poorly and you wanted to give it a bit of a lift, then you could use sea salt. Sea salt helps to stimulate root growth in the, um, in the lawn itself. And um, you could use that at any time of the year. So if you had a lot of weeds and the lawn was a bit tired, you wanted to help it along a bit, you could use something like that. There are liquid, um, liquid lawn foods without a weeder in them as well. So it, it comes down to how you like to feed. And One of the other reasons you need to apply lawn foods regularly is because every time you cut your grass, you're removing a lot of the food that's in the leaves of the grass. So um, with successive cuts, you know, every time you cut it, you're taking more fertiliser out of the lawn. So you need to, that's why you have to replenish it on a regular basis. This is a small weeder. So if you've got one or two weeds and you don't want to use, you know, one that collects onto your hose, you've got the odd spot weed coming up in your lawn. Um, this is just a matter of spraying directly on the weed. No water. No, you don't have to water it, no. Um, you have to be uh, conscious of the weather. You know, you can't do any of these weed sprays on a wet day because obviously they wash away. They wash away. But um, this is convenient if you've only got one or two weeds and you just want to, you know, give them a bit of a zap. It's easy to use. Um, again, you have to be careful um, spraying around the edge of the lawn because it might affect um, the plants around the edge of the lawn. Can I concentrate weed killers? This is another um, one suitable for any types of lawn, but uh, particularly for buffalo lawns. Uh, this is a concentrate which you dilute in water and then put it into some sort of sprayer or watering can and then apply it over the area where the weeds are. Um, these being concentrate uh, a lot stronger and they go a lot further. So that little bottle will make up uh, enough solution to cover 400 square metres. Mm. So you get a lot of value out of a, a bottle like that. Particularly if you've got a lot of weeds, you know, that might be, um, might be handy. Uh, but again, it only controls the flat weeds or the, what they call the broadleaf weeds. It won't do grassy weed um, on any types of grass. So when is the best time to apply these weed killers in soon summer as, months? The, the, the best time as soon as the weeds become evident in the lawn. You know, if you leave the weeds too long, then they become more established, mm. particularly if they're seeding type weeds and they can invade the rest of the lawn. So as soon as you see the weeds, it's better to get on top of them, you know. And then the areas where the weeds are growing, if there was no lawn, um, you had patches, I would be inclined to, to re-sow or put some new turf in. Because wherever there's bare patches, the weeds are going to try and come back again. And that comes down to making sure your lawn is, is fed regularly and watered well to try and encourage, you know, um, the density where you don't get the weeds occurring, hopefully. So for buffalo, how, how frequently you should water? Um, it depends on the weather. Uh, if you want to keep it growing well and nice and green, um, I'd be doing it probably once or twice a week. Um, it, it would survive without watering but it looks a lot better when it is water. Uh, so obviously the more, and it's, it's great when we get rain, obviously that, that, uh, that um, obviously helps, but, but if it's a hot, dry summer, you know, a couple of times a week would be beneficial. So I'll mention another seed. The other, the other one is cooch, the cooch grass. You might have heard of cooch grass. Cooch grass is a very flat grass. If you wanted the lawn that you didn't have to mow very much, um, then cooch grass is very durable. It grows, it is a spreading grass. It's got very fine blades and it's very low to the ground. Um, they often use it, um, certain types of cooch are often used on cricket wickets because um, they can mow it really, really low down. Uh, it's a very tough grass again for a hot and dry, um, sunny area. Often used on nature strips. Um, because a lot of other grasses don't survive very well on nature strip. This is um, uh, quick growing, very hardy grass. It comes in a few different forms. They market it as pooch cooch because it's like the kaikuyu, it's self repairing when the animals are running over and wearing tracks in the roof. Um, they tend to be able to, because it's a runner grass, it has the ability to reshoot off the runners.
this uh, various types of hatching type seeds and I might add you can use any grass seed for patching if you've got if you had a buffalo lawn for instance you probably want to keep it looking as buffalo but if you had a mixed uh, grass um, lawn then something like this is good for repairing patches where you're not that fussy about how the lawn's going to look. This is an upright growing grass generally rye grass uh, and they use rye grass because it's hardy and because it establishes very quickly. If uh, you have a contractor who comes in and digs up the lawn or digs up the nature strip, they go through and they throw some seed down after they've been. They normally um, use something like this which is like a rye grass because it's reliable and um, it's, it's going to fill, fill in the patches very quickly. But uh, it's not long-term sort of lawn. It's okay if you've got a bit of a mixed lawn and you're not fussed about what sort of grass is in your lawn. They're a good sort of patching. Uh, one of the main problems you have with people have with lawns are grubs in the lawn. Um, and they're what they call curl grubs and that's the um, the grub lives in the soil around the root system of the plants and it eats the roots and eventually because the plant can't take up water because it doesn't have any roots on it you end up with dead areas in the lawn. Mm -hmm. And you can almost lift the old dead grass directly off the ground because it doesn't have any roots attached to it. Um, and it's a common problem in new lawns and in um, uh, particularly turf lawns, you can get the grub occurring. Uh, you can treat it and there's various ways of treating it. And the birds often indicate when you have grubs in the lawn because they peck at the lawn to get to the grubs because they're probably a bit of a delicacy for the birds to eat. Uh, generally some of these grubs can be quite large like a big wishy grub and the birds tend to eat, peck at the lawn to get to the grubs and um, can cause a bit of damage to your lawn. Whenever you see the birds eating your lawn you know you've got um, you know you've got grubs in the lawn and they can kill out quite large areas quite quickly particularly if there's a number of uh, grubs uh, in the lawn itself. So they feed continuously through the warmer months of the year. They can start as early as about September in Melbourne and then eventually they turn into a beetle and the beetle bores a hole out mm -hmm. under the lawn and you often get these little mounds of soil in the lawn where the beetles emerged and it runs off and, um, and then uh, starts the whole process again, breeding and laying eggs and then the grub starts, starts in the lawn again. So. You can have them any time in the lawn, but the main time is through the through the warmer months of the year, I guess. What other uh, products we can use, like uh, you know, there would be ants and other stuff, which we might have to, you know, ants. 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 So often, when you get ants in the garden or in the lawn, it often indicates that the soil is very dry, mm. because ants only nest in dry areas. Okay. So if you've got ant nests in a lawn, it means that the lawn's not getting enough water. And it would discourage the ants if you if you water more often. You can get ant killers, mm. which um, uh, you can either uh, treat the nest if you know where the nest is, or you can uh, treat the, the the walking trails of the ants themselves. Um, but if you're actually nesting in the garden um, or in the soil, it normally means they're um, dry. Yeah. Thank you. And just uh, another question: So when we lay out the turf. On the lawn, mm -hmm. so uh, would the patches be visible, like the boundaries for the where, where the turf joins yeah. together? Um, it is initially, but often when you lay the turf, you can put some topsoil in between those cracks, okay. and within a very short period of time, it grows in. You can't see it. Okay. It's like it rolls out like carpet. In fact, the buffalo I think comes in slabs. Mm -hmm. It's not rolls. Mm -hmm. And um, where they join together, there's always a bit of a gap, but within a couple of weeks, you can't see it. It all grows in together.